He designed and built the rockets that launched the first artificial satellite into space, as well as the first animal, the first man, the first woman, the first two-man crew, and the first three-man crew. And nearly 60 years after his time, versions of those very same rockets are still being used. You'd think the man responsible for these achievements would be famous, synonymous with genius, with all kinds of spacecraft and other cool stuff named after him. And yet, Sergei Korolev spent his career working in near anonymity, an enigma whose accomplishments remain hidden from public view until the day his obituary ran in 1966. A brilliant engineer, Korolev built his first glider at the age of 17, and after graduating from Kiev Polytechnic Institute in his native Ukraine, he became interested in rocket propulsion. In 1932, while still in his mid-twenties, Korolev was appointed the head of the Soviet Union's Jet Propulsion Research Group, tasked with running the country's rocket development program. But his career came to an abrupt halt in 1938, when he was arrested by Joseph Stalin's secret police on trumped-up charges that were probably made by his own colleagues. He spent much of the next seven years imprisoned in a Siberian gulag. Upon his release near the end of World War II, Korolev resumed his duties, but in order to keep his identity and his work a secret, he was referred to in official communications only as the chief designer. Like their American counterparts, the Russians wanted to learn everything they could about the vastly superior rocket technology developed by the Germans, specifically the V-2, pioneered by Werner von Braun. Most German scientists had surrendered to the Americans, but the Soviets captured some of their rocket components and enlisted a few German scientists of their own. With their help, Korolev essentially reverse-engineered the V-2 and produced a vastly improved version of it. The result was the R-1. First launched in 1948, it had a range of 270 kilometers, about 70 kilometers farther than the V-2. The next version, the R-2, doubled that range, as Korolev's team lengthened the fuel tanks and improved the propellant turbo pumps initially designed by von Braun. They also replaced the ethyl alcohol fuel with methyl alcohol, in part because the uh, launch troops had taken to drinking the rocket fuel. Korolev also added a detachable warhead to the R-2, which had important implications for spaceflight, because it could be turned into a recoverable payload capsule with a parachute. In fact, in 1951, Korolev strapped two dogs into an R-2 payload and recovered them 100 kilometers away. As military weapons, the R-1 and R-2 never really caught on, mostly because their range was too short, the warhead was too small, and the vehicle's oxidizer, liquid oxygen, was extremely tricky and dangerous to use. But Korolev's seventh generation rocket, the R-7, would be the game changer as a weapon, but more so as an instrument of science. Designed to carry a 5,400 kilogram warhead, more than 8,000 kilometers, the R-7 was the first intercontinental ballistic missile. And it looked unlike any rocket that had come before it. With a long central core booster surrounded by four detachable liquid rocket boosters, the R-7 was designed to provide a maximum thrust at launch with the ability to shed its empty fuel tanks as it gained altitude and speed. It's a model often used today, but in 1957, it was a revolutionary concept. The R-7 worked. Not so much as an ICBM, its range wasn't quite long enough to scare the Americans, but rather as a launch vehicle. On October 4th, 1957, while still officially in the testing phase, an R-7 rocket named Sputnik launched a 57-centimeter artificial satellite of the same name into low Earth orbit. Thanks to Korolev's invention, the space age had begun. And it was just the beginning for Korolev's rocket. Every subsequent Soviet and Russian launch vehicle has used the basic R-7 design. Most of the changes have just involved lengthening the rocket to hold more fuel, allowing it to carry larger payloads. In 1961, an adapted version of the R-7 known as Vostok launched the first human and Yuri Gagarin into space. Several years later, the Soyuz rocket program began, and it continues to this day. All in all, variations on the R-7 have been launched into space more than 1,700 times. And every time another one goes up there, we have Sergei Korolev, aka the chief designer, to thank. Thanks for joining me for SciShow Space. If you want to keep exploring the universe with us, check out subbable.com slash scishow to see how you can become a contributing member of our community. And don't forget to go to youtube.com slash scishowspace and subscribe.